the digital footprint, as it says, is how much presence you have online, how much of a mark you are leaving online. Another way I like to think of this, folks, is your digital real estate, whether you own it like your website, whether you rent it like a social media profile. Uh, we want to make sure that we're looking at the full landscape online and we're maximizing it wherever we can. Now, maximizing means doubling down. So not just having a website and a social profile, which those are important, but doubling down on that and getting listed and found on other places online that we know consumers are searching. So we want to make sure you double down there and then where you do exist, that you're giving them content to consume that they understand and that they're looking for, those frequently asked questions. So we'll talk all about that today. Again, just a couple of housekeeping items as I look here uh, in the chat is you can use the chat, you can use the Q&A box to talk with me throughout the webinar, but we're going to go ahead and jump right on in. Now, in true Diana fashion, every webinar I give, I like to create a lot of structure around it. So let's talk about what we're going to cover. And then this is going to be a three-part webinar. Part one, part two, part three, we're going to dive into those different legs of the webinar and again, create that structure for us to better take in this information. I know financial advisors are not necessarily marketing experts. It may not really be what nourishes you or fills your cup as an advisor. And that's why I like to chew, add in as much structure as I can here. So what are we going to talk about? First and foremost, there's some compelling data behind the way consumers search online and look online for advisors and, and how they do their own research that you absolutely need to know about. We'll also talk about why you should think about setting up a web listing to, again, double down on your findability. Now, a paid web listing is a top five Kitsies marketing strategy, and I'm sure most of you on this webinar know who Michael Kitsies is. And Wealthtender isn't the only platform you can do that on. There are other tools, but in general, we'll cover the importance of it, and we'll look at some Wealthtender examples. We'll also talk about how you can collect and promote client testimonials on Wealthtender to drive consumer trust. Now, some of you might get really afraid when I start talking about reviews, but I will show you a very easy process for this. And we're going to talk about Google. We're going to talk about Yelp. We're going to talk about it all. And then finally, the last op the last item here is how can you land media opportunities on Wealthtender that helps you boost your SEO and credibility? Now, you might have heard me say the word wealth tender a lot there. So here's here was the foundational reason I launched this webinar. I've had a lot of advisors ask me since I joined forces with Brian and the team at wealth tender, what is wealth tender? So I figured, OK, let's take the bulk of what wealth tender is, but let's also combine that with some value for you. Again, whether you use wealth tender or not, you're going to walk away from today's session with a ton of value. Now, that last uh, opportunity here that you can see around credibility and media opportunities, those are words that you normally hear from a PR company. Um, so we're going to talk about how Wealthtender sort of plays in that space a bit and has this PR engine built underneath that will help you double down on where you're showing up online. Brian, anything else you want to add here before you go off camera? I think that's all great. Okay. All right. Wonderful. Okay, so before we get into part one of the webinar, let's talk about your digital reputation and some data that I think you need to understand. So 70% of a research that a consumer is doing online, right? Their whole buying journey. You have to think somebody is, they know, number one, I need something. Number two, I'm going to go online and start looking. Number three, I'm going to search and see what I can find online about that thing. And number four, I'm going to finally make that decision, whether it's buying a product or contacting a business. 70% of that process is happening on their own, which means if they're out there doing their research, what kind of substance do you have out there for them to take in, for them to find and to read and understand and help them make a decision based on? So that's the purpose here. We, we definitely want to give them, I like to call it food, right? We all love food. Everybody here loves to eat food. Uh, at least I would think so. And so we want to give them that great food to consume while they're on their own journey. 
And again, most of you might have a website online. You might have a social profile online. But what if your website doesn't show up on the first page of Google because it's just not SEO optimized yet? And that takes time. Uh, same with your social profile. Maybe you don't have a Google My Business profile. And so, you know, what are the chances of getting found through that search that they're doing on their own? Well, we want to change that. We want you to be more prominent and present online. So we give them that food to consume. Another stat that I really like, because this one is specific to financial services, this is based on a local consumer survey done by Bright Local, and this was a couple of months ago, and they found that 81% of consumers said online reviews are important when making decisions about financial services. I'm just checking on the chat here. Okay, beautiful. Feel free to use the Q&A box as well, folks. The reality with this is that the tides are changing, right? And they're changing very, very fast. We all search online for reviews to make decisions. And so we want to make sure, again, we have enough substance for them to be able to take in and help them make that decision. We know the majority of that decision they're making is being done on their own terms, right? Their research is being done on their own terms. So we want to give them stuff they can actually find. We're going to move into part one. We, we set the stage a bit with just some of that background, that understanding around digital real estate and how you know consumers are searching online, what's important to them with reviews and content. Now let's talk about how you can actually start to double down. So I mentioned a moment ago, a web listing. You might have also heard of this as a paid web listing in more marketing terms. And this is a top five Kitsies marketing strategy. What I think is interesting about uh, the, the Kitsy study that he did on all the different marketing strategies and where this one plays a part is that he, Kitsy's also agrees that having a web listing is a, a really good use of your time and your money, right? It's a modest investment. I like to call it like a no brainer marketing tool because you don't put a lot of time into it, right? You set it up once and then it kind of works for you. When you think about something like email marketing, for example, which is another part of your marketing strategy, that does take a lot more time and effort, uh, and it takes ongoing maintenance. Now, your profile, again, that's a different nature. So it's a modest investment of time and money, but what's interesting is that it's not nearly as popular with advisors. In fact, it was a lot less common that advisors in the study that they that Kitsy surveyed were using a paid web listing. But for the ones that were, it was their lowest client acquisition cost was came from their paid web listings. Their clients that they got online from a web listing, they acquired them at the lowest cost. So I think this is very important to consider if if you want sort of a um, a low maintenance marketing strategy implemented in your business that you don't have to work on all the time, right? That that nourishing thing that I was talking about it doesn't necessarily nourish you. It's a pretty great strategy to have. Not a lot of advisors are doing it, but the ones that are are seeing the ROI is very smart for them. Now, moving into the general nature of a web listing, right? You might have heard of not only Wealth Tender, but other sites like IndieFin or Find an Advisor or Fee Only Network, uh, FinancialAdvisor.com, Zoe Financial. There's a lot of options out there. Now, they're all different, but there's a lot of options out there. But what they share in common is when people go to the site, they're searching for an advisor and they're doing that in a few different ways. They might be looking for somebody specializing in a certain area like divorced women, or they might be looking for an advisor with a unique designation, or in a lot of cases, they're really just looking for a local advisor near them. They want someone they can meet, talk to in person, um, and have that relationship with in person. So that's sort of the nature of these, of these sites. And you're creating a profile, you're putting all your information, and then it goes out into the world. And hopefully, it gets people on your page that want to contact you and potentially work with you. However, what is of note with these types of websites is that they really only work well if they're actually generating consumer traffic. So if there is if there is a site filled with advisor profiles, but not a lot of consumers are going to it, you really need to ask yourself, is this even a good use of my time? As minimal as the time commitment is to get a profile you have to ask that question. What does that traffic look like? 
Now with Wealth Tender, uh, I like the structure because what Wealth Tender does is we're putting out content that we know is getting searched for. So consumers are looking for an advisor in Los Angeles, or they're they're wanting to understand what does a CFP really mean? Is is that right for me? Or I'm a small business owner. I need an advisor. These are commonly asked questions, commonly um, searched phrases online, and we're leading them right back to that Wealth Tender website where they're getting the answers they need on the content, but then they're also being kind of served up advisors that specialize in that specific thing that they searched for. Um, And over 1 million people have viewed WellTender content in 2023. So I think, uh, again, you want to focus on getting a profile on a site that actually drives consumer traffic. And this next slide I wanted to include in here because this is data, and I know advisors love data, your numbers people. What we can see here on the left and the right-hand side are two different things. And I'm going to actually start on the right because we were just talking about that. So on the right-hand side, we can see monthly visitors across a few of the different more well-known uh, find an advisor websites, including WealthTender. And you can see that WealthTender ranks number one uh, in regards to how many visitors are we getting every single month. On the left-hand side, besides how much traffic we're getting, one other thing you have to think about is, yes, traffic is important, but if I'm on my phone and I'm looking on Google for an advisor for women or for a business owner, I want to make sure that the website that I'm listed on is going to come up really, really high, right? If I'm on the third page, it may not really help me all that much. With Wealth Tender, as you can see on the left, again, ranking number one here as far as getting that domain authority. That's what we call that SEO ranking, domain authority. So it's coming up top, and I'll show you on this next slide here how that actually looks in action. But when I'm on Google searching, again, I might be searching for an advisor for young adults, for debt, for small business, student loans. It's a very specific search. In fact, this is how people are searching in today's world. We're searching for very specific things. Then you can see here that next step is right on the top of Google. Uh, I can see Wealth Tender, and there's a, an article here looking for a financial advisor for young adults. And I can click on that and be led right into that directory and some content that will help me. Over on the very right, you can see some of the more popular search terms and examples. And again, you can see where Wealth Tender ranks on Google, number one, number two, and third place. Now, before I move on to uh, a couple examples I'm going to show you on Wealth Tender, I did want to also add, um, you know, there's a difference in structure around pricing. And so I touched on that earlier. All these different find an advisor sites, they operate uniquely. For example, Zoe Financial, if you're going to get listed there, you have to be willing to give Zoe Financial at least 30 to 40 percent of your AUM every time you get a client from that platform. That is their success fee. If you're okay with doing that, by all means, go for it. Um, but with Wealth Tender, we've built a very different model. In fact, one that I would say matches sort of the independent nature of RIAs versus like an insurance salesman, for example. Um, and what I mean by that is you're, you're not paying a success fee here. You're not giving away your AUM. We're leading traffic to you. We're benefiting from the traffic we get with all of our great content. You pay a very small monthly fee. We do not take a success fee. Um, The other thing to note is that some of these platforms are not only taking a success fee, but they're taking that lead that may have, you know, opted in on your profile, and now they're being split to other advisors. Um, So they also, they usually launch like quizzes and things to get that consumer information in, but again, they're then sharing it with other advisors. So these are just a couple of things to consider when you're thinking about uh, getting listed on a find an advisor website and the different pricing structure. Now, I am going to stop share really fast, and then I'm going to share my screen here, and we're going to look at some examples 
on Wealth Tender specifically. Now, this advisor, some of you may or may not know, but this is Taylor Schulte. He has a profile on Wealth Tender. So if I go to the homepage of Wealth Tender, I can see lots of great content. I can immediately look at local guides, specialist guides. I can go into directories and find firms and podcasts. Yes, you can promote your podcast on Wealth Tender, uh, financial advisors, blogs, all of that can be promoted here. And then you land on whichever profile profile you select. So in this case, I chose Taylor. Now, right away, I, I get this sort of social media feel, and right? that's what we want. We want it to be as easy as using, you know, Facebook, for example. But right away, I can see Taylor's banner, and I can see his name and his designation. I can click and go to his website. I can click and call him right away. And I can just get a little blurb right here, retirement and tax planning for people over age 50. I can see he serves clients nationwide and where he's located. Uh, I'll skip over this review piece. He actually just turned this on. Now, not every advisor on Wealth Tender has this turned on. We're going to talk about reviews next. Um, some of you can, some of you can't yet. But if it were turned off, you wouldn't see anything here at all. So it wouldn't say there were zero reviews. It just wouldn't show anything at all. But he's turned it on. He's already collecting reviews. And now they're just going through the, his compliance workflow. So he should have those up any day now. Now, going down, I can see, okay, this advisor is sharing their areas of focus. I can see meeting options with this advisor. I can quickly book an intro call. This is going right to Taylor's web uh, Calendly it, or Acuity. I think he uses Acuity. It is not going to Wealth Tender. Uh, it is not being split with other people. It's going right to Taylor. I can read about Taylor. I can see his compensation methods, what I can expect in the first meeting. This is huge. Most people have fear. They don't understand how to even work with an advisor. Um, and that generational wealth transfer is happening. So we want to be as clear as possible, set the stage for them so they know what's going on. I'll scroll down a little further. He's got some badges here. He could, you know, talk about uh, his affiliations, hobbies, interests, his disclosure. Uh, and there's a map here of specifically where he is located. Once his reviews start populating, that will come here. Once he starts contributing to content on Wealth Tender, again, we're going to talk about that or any other articles he's created he wants to feature. That can all be here. Um, so that is an example of a plot of, of a page on Wealth Tender. Again, there are other pages on here. There's so many fantastic advisors on Wealth Tender, um, but this one is a great one for us to look at. Most of you, again, you probably know who Taylor Schulte is. So he's he's very vocal in the space, and he helps a lot of advisors get started with marketing. So I'm going to go back to my deck here and share my screen. Give me a second. Sometimes it gets a little difficult to navigate all the different screens here. But uh, now that we've looked at an example, I want to move to part two. So we laid that foundation. Part one, get a listing. But now we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to start to talk about those reviews because we want to double down on that real estate. But now once they're there, we want to make sure we have the right content for them to be able to move them in the right direction, which we all know we want them to book a call with us. We want them to eventually become a client. So we'll talk about reviews. I will show you how to get started, uh, how to ask for a review without sounding too salesy, um, how you can leverage your reviews on social media. We're going to cover it all with reviews. First and foremost, let's talk about the emotional nature of a review. Now, decisions are made off of multiple factors, but these two main ones here. Number one, decisions are made off of facts. We do our research. We want to know the advisor's education, their credentials, their years of experience. That, that are, those are facts. But decisions cannot physically be made without emotions in place. And you can look that up and quote me and do all your research. Decisions cannot be made without emotions. So they're, they're really what gets us over what I like to say, that finish line. Um, or in some cases, they're what get us started to begin with in making a final decision around anything in our lives, especially hiring for financial help. So what's the emotional side here? Online reviews, referrals, word of mouth. What are other people saying about you? Again, we're looking for reviews when we hire an attorney or a plumber or a cleaning service to come to our house or a restaurant that we might be going to. We're always looking to see what other people have to say. 
because it creates that emotional experience for us. And so we want to put these two together. And that's why advisors who are collecting and promoting reviews, they are going to be the ones that get that phone call, right? When you put uh, advisor A stacked up to advisor B, if advisor A has reviews, but advisor B doesn't, which one do you think is the one that's going to get that phone call from that prospect? Absolutely advisor A. So it's quickly becoming the norm for every single thing that we do. Now, the other reality is when people are looking for an advisor, there's usually some sort of emotional catalyst that they're working off of. Maybe they got a job change, they got a new job, and they're making a lot more money now, or they lost a parent, or their family is growing. These are all very emotional experiences. And so what do they want to feel out of that? Well, they definitely want to feel uh, anxiety relief. They want to feel confident. They want to feel that sense of calm. And so what helps them feel that way are online reviews. So truly, online reviews are establishing that emotional connection. But what does a compliant online review look like? That's what we're looking at here. So this is uh, actually a screenshot of a sample review from WealthTender. And this is exactly how the WealthTender platform um, sort of puts all of the reviews together. This is a compliant review. And here's what makes it compliant. First and foremost, you have the review itself. But underneath that, you can see those three bullet points. Those are the disclosures. They're clear and prominent disclosures. And I call it the triple C, client compensation conflicts of interest. So you can see that first bullet point. Jane is not a client. Jane is a friend of Allison's. All right. That second one, compensation. The reviewer received no compensation for this review. Yes, you can compensate your clients for reviews. Conflicts of interest. Jane has been a dear friend of this advisor since college. So it creates a natural conflict of interest. Any additional disclosures you can put, that's totally fine. Um, but those that triple C is going to be the bulk of what you need here to make a review compliant. Now, what about Google or Yelp? So many of you have probably, you know, understood at this point that having presence on Google is very important. And that's where SEO comes in and reviews and a Google business profile, all that works together. However, when it comes to testimonials, and the SEC marketing rule, and they just put out a risk alert because they're saying advisors are not following this, which is very scary because you're going to see a lot more fines coming down. Um, what you need to understand is that Google and Yelp, as they stand, are not compliant. Now, I would never tell you to tell your clients, don't leave me a Google review because you don't need to say that. If they want to leave you a Google review, awesome. It's going to actually help you get even more exposure on Google. But there's some things you need to understand about, can you promote them? Can you not promote them? How do they work? So we're going to look at that here on this next slide. And I just kind of created a two-part page here for you. We're going to start with Google. Again, Google is great for exposure. So is Yelp. But unfortunately, you're limited on what you can even do with those reviews. So they're really only helpful in a small area. On Google, you cannot solicit compensated reviews. So that is a Google policy. You cannot go tell your clients, I will pay you to leave a review on Google. You can tell them to leave a review in general, according to Google. There's no rules against that. Um, but if they're not putting those disclosures in their review, then now you just have a review that you can't even go back and promote. So you can see that next bullet here. You cannot promote the reviews as is. If you go to Google and you read a review, you know there are not the triple C does not exist there. So you cannot tell your clients, go look at my reviews on Google. That is not compliant. You cannot have clients leave anonymous reviews on Google. And this is a big one because believe it or not, there's a good amount of people who would prefer to keep that type of review between them and their financial advisor completely anonymous, Google does not allow for that. Um, so if you have clients that say, sure, I'd love to leave you a review, but I want to leave an anonymous review, I'd rather keep my name out of it, is what they'd probably say, then Google's not going to serve you there. Um, Google's algorithm might also delete legitimate reviews. We've seen this happen. I have examples I could share with you. It's very, very annoying. But if you have a great review, like a glowing review, it might think that that was a compensated review. And so their algorithm deletes it. And you're not getting that review back ever again. 
And then finally, if you do ever come across or have to deal with sort of the bad actor review, which is just a, a false review or, or, you know, somebody that wasn't like accurately representing you or your company, you actually have to file a legal violation with uh, Google and through that whole process uh, to actually get that removed. The SEC, it's a big thing. So it's a bit of a headache. Again, great for exposure, but a bit of a headache. Yelp, similar in certain aspects. In fact, you cannot ask clients to leave a review on Yelp at all. According to Yelp, it is completely prohibited. And to me, that says they don't really support the business owner, but uh, we'll, we'll focus on, on just the review piece here. You cannot solicit reviews, whether they're compensated or not. Yelp policy is that you cannot ask clients to leave reviews there. Yes, you can tell people I'm on Yelp, but that's about it. You can't really say anything else. You can't ask them to leave a review. You certainly can't tell them, go look at my Yelp reviews, because again, they don't have the disclosures. So that second bullet point, can't promote them as is. And then finally, similar to Google, their software might mark legitimate reviews as not recommended. If they're just too perfect, then their software algorithm is going to come against you and it's going to recommend or mark it as not recommended. So it's a bit of a headache here. Now, what else could you do with your reviews? So say you are on Wealth Tender and you want to cherry pick a review and you want to promote it on social media. You can absolutely do that. And on this next slide, I'm going to show you an example of two amazing advisors that are on Wealth Tender and they have their reviews on Wealth Tender. They even have the reviews embedded into their website from Wealth Tender. Yes, you can do that. I will show you how that looks in just a second. But you can see here that they got the review. That's they cherry picked it from Wealth Tender, and then on the bottom you can see the triple C. But you can also be routed back to all of their other reviews. So you can see read more reviews at wt.reviews/rustthornton. That is how you make cherry picking compliant. You have to link it back to those reviews where they came from. Now again, if you've got great Google reviews but they don't have the disclosure, you cannot do any of this. You cannot link back to Google reviews because they're not compliant. Um, so it's something to consider. Again, we want to give people great substance. We want to double down on our presence online, but we also want to make sure that we're compliant in the process. And the reviews piece is so vital to your growth. It is so vital in that sort of consumer digital journey when they're looking up this stuff on their own, but you have to go about it the right way. Um, I am going to uh, pull up an example of uh, Russ's Wealth Tender page and his website so I could show you how the reviews appear there. I'll also even show you how on Google, Google uh, sees Wealth Tender as a official review website. So now reviews on Wealth Tender are also being put in that Google business profile, which is really, really helpful to you. That's that's the big reason why I, you know, I say Google is still great to have, but now we're seeing them pick up Wealth Tender. So I'll show you that in a second. Before I do though, a lot of you have asked me, how can we ask for a review? I feel so weird doing this. In fact, I think most of my clients would leave something negative. I don't want negative reviews. That's a lot of imposter syndrome talking for a lot of advisors. And in fact, we see across the hundreds of reviews that we have on Wealth Tender for advisors, right now there's only two four star. The rest are five. And the two that are four, they're not four for any negative reasons. Um, but it just goes to show like there's actually a lot of pent up demand. Clients are wondering, why haven't you asked me to leave you a review sooner? Most don't even understand the regulatory nature unless you're telling them up front. But most of them are wondering why you have not asked them for a review. So this is a template. Feel free to use it. What you need to understand is you have to send this to all of your clients. You cannot just cherry pick clients to ask reviews from. That is not compliant with the SEC marketing role. So you have to send it to everyone. And I won't read through this whole thing, but it's short and sweet. You're making sure that you make it really clear it's optional for them. It's not a requirement. Don't add any pressure. Hey, at your own time, here's my link. And in this case, you would just give them your well tender link. So that is something that we would set up for you. All right, and just looking at the chat box really quickly here before, yes, Amy, absolutely. You're gonna get a copy of this template, no problem at all. So 
last piece here, and then we're going to look at some examples. Where can else you ask for a review? You don't have to directly ask, um, but you can make it very apparent that it is an option for your clients. And you can do that in a variety of ways. For example, you can include a link in your email signature, leave me a review, links back to Wealth Tender. You can add a section in your newsletter if you're doing a newsletter. Like what you like what you read here, or have I impacted you positively? Just like right in the footer, um, you can leave me a review here. Create an instructional flyer for your office. Everyone that walks in has a great experience. They're sitting down, you know, having that coffee while they wait on you guys in the waiting room. There's a flyer right there, and from the moment they walked in, they've already been so delighted because you have personalized that experience for them. At least you should be. You should definitely know how your prospects take their coffee if they're coming in for a meeting with you. Um, you can build out a dedicated section on your website. Your reviews absolutely should be on your website. If you're doing this on your own, sans wealth tender, and you're adding the disclosures, you're going to have to, like, for sure, accrue some development costs, make it all look good on the website. And that's up to you if you want to do that. The cool thing about wealth tender is they have an embed widget. So we make it really easy. Once you get those reviews, then you use the embed widget. They go on your website. Again, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, you can also incorporate a request into your client review. Great time to ask for a review. At the heels of that client review, they're feeling good. They just went through and had a great meeting with you. Right now is an awesome time to ask that. And you could be in your follow-up email. It doesn't even have to be um, you know, face-to-face -face if you don't want to. And then finally, for some clients, they, they might really respect if you propose a charitable donation as compensation. So you don't have to compensate them directly, but you can compensate and, and send that in a form of a charitable donation. Okay, before we move into the next part, what I'm going to do here, just checking if there's any other questions, is I'm going to stop share and we're going to take a quick look at some examples of a wealth tender profile here. So give me just a second. All right, that should do it. And I'm going to pull up, so we looked at Taylor's profile, but now I'm going to pull up Russ's profile. So we're looking here and I can see this is Russ Thornton's profile on Wealth Tender. He's also got a banner, a lot of the same information, but different than Taylor, he is already uh, collecting reviews and they're already being promoted directly on the site. So I can go all the way down to these reviews and I can see them here with all of the different disclosures compliant. And this is great because, again, we're driving consumers to this website. And now Russ is not only having a page, but now consumers can see his reviews. And again, we know how important reviews are in their process. But now if I go to Russ's website, so I'm going to go to the homepage real quick, Wealth Care for Women. I love this website. Very simple, as it should be. I can scroll down and click Reviews. And he has used the Wealth uh, Tender Embed Widget to bring all these reviews on his website. So I can see all of the reviews here. I can scroll down. This is as easy as grabbing a copy, a piece of code, and putting it on the back end of your website. You don't have to do anything else. And again, he's cherry picking some of the ones he likes the most to promote on social with that graphic that I showed you, but he's linking back to all of his reviews on Wealth Tender. Uh, you could also link back directly here if he wanted to, to this reviews page where they all live. Now, real quick, Pax Financial, they're also on Wealth Tender. They're based out of Hollywood Park, Texas. They have reviews on their Wealth Tender profile. But if I'm just Googling like Pax Financial reviews, for example, yes, they have Google reviews, but we've imported those into Wealth Tender for them. We've turned them into compliant reviews. Yes, we can do that too. And I can see here reviews from the web. So now right in that Google business profile on the side panel here, Wealth Tender reviews are also appearing, um, which is awesome. It's just going to help SEO um, and credibility. And then the last thing I want to quickly show you is Daniel Yerger. So Daniel is an advisor and he's got reviews on Wealth Tender. You search for his name and now we're seeing all of these reviews pop up right at the top of Google. So they're actually picking out what they love the most or like, you know, some of the best comments and reviews here. Excellent. We highly recommend outstanding service. All of this is visible. So if I met with you and I'm going to go online and do some research, or maybe I haven't met with you yet and I'm seeing this, this is very, very positive. And that's exactly what we want. We want that positive experience. 
Okay, so let me go back to the deck here. We're going to get into part three, folks. And I'm excited about part three because this is an area that I think probably falls last on the list for a lot of advisors. And it just, it's natural that way, even for companies, right? You don't really invest much in PR until you've invested a bit in your marketing. But with Wealth Tender, you really get both of best worlds and for a sliver of the cost because PR firms are not going to charge you what we charge to have these media opportunities land in your inbox literally every single week, if not every single day. So I want to talk about the media. I want to talk about getting your name as an advisor in reputable articles, in reputable publications, and helping people not only see your website, your social profile, your find an advisor profile, but now they're seeing you on CNBC. Now they're seeing you on MSN. They're seeing you on those popular finance blogs. They're reading your content there. They're getting their questions answered. And you're getting thousands of additional views to your content potentially. And that that is a big way to double down, as I've mentioned so much in this webinar. So we're going to talk specifically about Wealth Tender right now because this is uh, sort of one of the, the legs of value that you get in Wealth Tender. Now, at Wealth Tender, what we've done is we've partnered with companies like MSN and where we can syndicate our content, get more and more views to an article that you might have written or contributed to on any given financial topic, but there's also reporters and journalists coming to us, again, weekly, if not daily, from Think Advisor, from CNBC, Wealth of Geeks, Associated Press, and they're asking for advisors on Wealth Tender. They're asking for their input. They want them to contribute to an article that they're writing on a financial topic, and that is a big, big deal because, again, if you're going to get those type of opportunities, usually you're going to pay a PR consultant or, uh, you know, a PR company, and it's going to be a lot more money than you would pay to Wealth Tender. Uh, here's an example of what that media request looks like. This hits right in your inbox. In fact, this is a screenshot directly from my inbox. And you can see right at the top, quote request for Wealth Tender. And the topic here is Gen Z Financial. So the writer is Jeff. Uh, the potential syndication is the Associated Press, and he's looking for either an advisor or a coach to chime in. He gives you the deadline to respond and the time, and he tells you the request. How can Gen Zs benefit from having a financial advisor? And how can they afford to hire an advisor? What should they look for in advisors? So if you get this, you have the opportunity to contribute. And obviously, I blocked out the writer's information, but you get it right there, right then in the email to contribute to. Uh, these are just some examples here of some articles, and I will show you and pull up some physical examples in a second. But the, the bigger picture here is that a prospect who's, again, doing their research, they're Googling your name, they're going to see you showing up in these other articles. And that's going to build, in their minds, a lot more credibility up front, uh, and they're going to have a different perspective of you, quite frankly. But the other portion here is that when you get listed on these articles, not only are your is your name listed, but now your website is also linked. So we call this backlinking. And in the world of SEO, it's a pretty big deal. You want as many other sites backlinking to your website. It tells Google, it tells the internet that you're a credible person, that they're, you know, you're you have a website, and we want to push that website up to the top because it's also being linked on different sites. So it's a popular site, it's a popular person. This is how you expand your SEO. This is how you boost your SEO, search engine optimization. For those of you who don't necessarily totally understand that world, it's essentially how prominent are you online? And we've got another question coming in here. Amy, how does publication work with broker dealer compliance? That is a wonderful question. And in fact, uh, Brian chimes in. Thanks, Brian. For articles published on Wealth Tender, we work with advisors to incorporate compliance disclosure. So we're always, always here to help. Okay, I want to show you this in action. So again, because Zoom is so crazy when I'm doing my webinars here, uh, give me just a second. I'm going to stop share and I'm going to pull up an article. I'm going to tell you a quick story here about one of these quotes that we got. So the quote that uh, 
similar to what I just showed you in my own inbox and how that that sort of evolved into getting a ton of views. So we had uh, Danny reach out. Danny wanted to write an article on the best places to retire in North Carolina. And we had a few advisors contribute to that article. And so on Wealth Tender, this is the article. And we can go through and see all the different contributions and like, you know, the managing director of Vincere Wealth, for example, I can click on that, get to his website, uh, True Advice Wealth Management, et cetera, et cetera. Great. This is helpful in and of itself. But MSN also syndicated the article because we have that part partnership. And so now it's on MSN where there's a lot more people searching for content. There's a lot more consumers on MSN. So now you're getting eyeballs on that. And then it even got picked up by a local news station. So ABC 13 News, this was also picked up there. So sort of an evolution of this uh, this request from a journalist on this specific topic. Another one I wanted to show you that uh, got a ton of traction, over 100,000 views. Uh, this is by Sarah Stanitz. She's a CFP and she's on Tender. And this is uh, one of our Ask an Advisor series. So besides me journalists and reporters out in the media asking for quotes, we're also creating stuff. So we create the Ask an Advisor series. And Sarah uh, responded to this one. My wife and I are getting divorced. She wants child support. It's unfair. What should I do? And Sarah responded to this full article. And this article, again, got over 100,000 views and backlinked directly to Sarah's website. So a ton of value there as far as um, getting that credibility, building that credibility online, and then um, getting more eyeballs on your content. That is very important as well. So let's summarize. We're going to do we're going to do something here. We're going to summarize what we learned just for our brains. And then we are going to look at a couple more things. I'll show you some pricing on Wealth Tender so you know exactly, you know, what it's broken down to and where you can go to learn more. But in summary, we know a website is important. We know social media is important, but we want to find ways where we can get even more digital real estate online. Whether again, we're renting or we're owning, same stuff. We want more digital presence. We want a bigger digital footprint. We know a web listing is a great way to do it. It's a top five Kitsies marketing strategy. Many advisors are not taking advantage of it. And for the ones that are, they can clearly see the ROI is a, a smart investment of their time and their money. Reviews, we know consumers need reviews. It's, it's, it satisfies that emotional part of their buying journey. We want to give them reviews, but we want to do it compliantly. And Google and Yelp are great for exposure, but they cause a real headache with compliance. So advisors are turning to tools like Wealthtender, who was designed for advisors to be able to do that. And then I like to say the cherry on the whole cake, I wish I had a real cherry right now, I love cherries, uh, is that you can also build more credibility. We call it credibility marketing, authority marketing, where you're not only getting on listed on your website, on the find an advisor directory, you've got your reviews, but now you're also contributing to other articles. You're getting thousands of more eyeballs on your content. Maybe it's uh, CNBC, maybe it's ABC, maybe it's Wealth of Geeks. There's lots of different um, popular finance blogs out there, but that is what, in summary, we want to help you with all together. And it kind of just beautifully works all together. Before we get into pricing, I've said a lot today, and one thing that I always like to do in my webinars is, aside from all the education that I gave you, I want you to hear what the industry is actually saying. And there's a few um, testimonials here from advisors on Wealth Tender. There's even one from a compliance officer at a Barron's Top 100 RIA firm out of Virginia. One of my favorites. My domain rating tripled. So remember, your domain rating is how high up you're coming on, on search engines, right? The number of backlinks doubled. Remember, that's other websites that are linking to your website, which is good for SEO. Website visits doubled. Awesome. Also good for SEO. And I was quoted in multiple articles. That is awesome. Uh, the compliance officer. I reviewed Well Tender and their client review process, and I am good with it. I actually really like their process. So I always like to show what other people are saying. And of course, if you're familiar with the T3 advisor technology survey that's done every single year in conjunction with the T3 conference, last year, this year, I should say back in March, 
which feels like forever ago, even though it's just a few months ago. Uh, Wealth Tender was recognized as the number one in digital marketing solutions under Mighty Might. So those are up and coming tools for extraordinary user rating. Everyone that's on Wealth Tender will tell you that it's easy to use. I like using it. I get benefit from it. You saw some of those reviews yourself. What does pricing look like? So there's three options here. We make it simple. And if you want to learn more, you can go to wealthtender.com forward slash grow. But the first option is a starter option. And that's going to give you that SEO optimized profile page that find an advisor web listing. It'll also allow you to use the reviews feature so you can collect and promote those compliantly and will get you featured in a local guide. But that's $29 a month. No success fee. Again, if somebody does business with you because they found your profile, we do not take a success fee. We're also not sharing any of the leads that you know click through to your profile. Uh, growth is $39 a month. This is our most popular one because it's, it's kind of got the best of both worlds. But you get all of that that I just mentioned, but now you also get those media opportunities. So now those are hitting your inbox. And we're going to list you in a lot of other guides, like a specialist guide, for example. Elite is our, and that's $39 a month. Elite's our top tier, $59 a month. You get everything, but you also now have an entire library of articles that we pay awesome writers to create for you that you could use on your website. Website. So if you want to continue driving more traffic specifically to your website, this is a great way to do that. And then finally, I just want to show you a few of the most beautiful faces. Uh, everyone is beautiful on Wealth Tender, but some of the beautiful faces on Wealth Tender, um, some people that have reviews, some people that don't have reviews, um, but we are growing like crazy and for good reason. I think uh, the smartest advisors, again, they're trying to find ways to expand that digital footprint without having to put in so much ongoing work. Wealth Tender is a really great place to do that. If there's any of you on the call that run enterprise or, you know, you have a lot of advisors in your firm, um, we also have an enterprise option. So we'll create a directory for you on your on your website, Onyx Advisor Network. Friends uh, over there, Emlyn, Desarte, love the team over there. We actually power their directory. And then CCFC, for example, those are designation holders. Um, that network also, we power that for them. If you're a marketing consultant or an agency, for example, we also just launched our certified consultant program. So if you want to start helping your advisors get you know, better SEO online and collect and promote reviews compliantly, we're going to train you up on the system and you can sort of take um, the reins for them on their Wealthtender account with doing all that stuff. And again, we'll help you do that. You'll become certified in Wealth Tender, and you can just add more value to your clients. Um, you know, in that in that form of reviews. And again, that is so so crucial. So I'm going to stop here. I've done a lot of talking. I did see a question come in, so I want to open up my Q and A here. Thank you all for spending all the time with me, and let's see what kind of questions we got here. Actually, Brian, you might have already answered that question for me. Thank you so very much. Let's see here. Yep. All right. Join Wealth Tender. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for answering that, Brian. Um, a few other questions that we have here that I just want to look into real quick. Uh, should I be worried about receiving negative reviews? So I'll, I'll answer this one, Brian, out loud. Um, it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, right? And there's some imposter syndrome going on there. But also, if you have a doctor or a lawyer that's a friend, right? Go ahead and ask them what their experience has been like. They were able to start doing this stuff before financial advisors, right? Advisors have sort of been prohibited for a while, but they will tell you um, how their experience has been. And overall, most of their reviews are going to be very positive. So it's something that there's a fear around, but not always for very good reason. Um, odds are, if you go and try to look at reviews for a doctor or a lawyer, uh, you're going to be happy with what you're finding on their reviews. Um, maybe not all, right? Because there are some crazy lawyers out there, but I won't get into that either. I respect them a lot. Um, the other question I have is when or why should I invite non-clients to write a review? And this this one comes up quite often. So um, non-clients is, is, is interesting, right? But if you are a new advisor 
or you're changing careers, for example, you don't really have a ton of clients to be writing you a review. Well, ask people who know your character to write you a review and, and have them vouch for you, right? They know who you are as a person and this is a people to people business. So there's nothing wrong with asking them for a review. So it looks like I don't see any other questions here in the Q&A. And we're at uh, 10.54, for me at least. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Everyone who joined us, again, thank you so very much. Where can you go to learn more? Wealthtender.com forward slash grow. Um, I hope that we'll get the chance to work together. Tim, thanks for your um, thanks for chiming in. Thanks for asking questions and thanks for being here. We will catch you all on the next webinar. Until then, I hope you have the most amazing summer. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.